Hi everyone, and welcome to Ask an Astronomer, and the first ever Diary of a PhD student. So the main question is, what have I been up to for the last 10 days since I gave that first introduction to, to this feature? And the answer is I've been working on the project for the last couple of years, and I'm just finishing it off now. So in, instead of talking about what that involved and what my research involved, what I thought I'd do is actually run through the publication process, what we do with our research once we come to the end of a project. Because most people aren't used to dealing with publications or papers or referees and all these sorts of terms. Uh, you hear them a lot in the news, especially terms like peer review. You hear that a lot in the news or scientific papers. And no, nobody really explains what they are. They just pass it off as in everybody should know but unless you work in science or unless you you know have a scientific background maybe or a background in research at least you're probably not going to know what all these mean and just take it for granted uh, you know it's a, it's a common term but they do have specific meanings so when we finish our research there's no point in just you know oh, well that's interesting and, and throwing it away in a drawer we need to communicate it we need to communicate it with other people in in the scientific community, other people who are working on similar things to we are, and also need to sometimes spread the word into the general public as well. As I say, a lot, a lot of the big stories get, get published on the news, but there's a lot of research that goes behind the, building up those big stories or something that may not have public interest but may have real underlying consequences for astrophysics or whatever your, whatever your uh, desired area of research is. So what we do is we write what's called a paper. And what a paper is, it's just like what you used to write, write in secondary school, albeit a bit longer and more technical. So you have an aim, what you were looking to try and find out, or you know what, what specific thing you were looking into. Then you have your method, so you have the way that you're you're gonna you you did your experiment so that people if they want to replicate the experiment can or they can look for maybe flaws in the way you did it or look for ways that they could do something similar and then you have obviously have your results so you have whatever that discovery you have you have the numbers you have tables you have graphs maybe images so depending on what 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 you've been looking into and then you have a conclusions and your discussion so you did you discuss the implications of those results in terms of what other people's research has said and how that fits into the big bigger general picture so we write this this uh big paper out and this is my one here which i'm hopefully should be the laugh draft and we send these off to what we call journals and the main two journals in uh, my field in astrophysics are one called MRAS, the Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, uh, which is a British-based one, and one called AppJ, so the Astrophysical Journal, and that's an American-based one. A lot of these are international projects as well. The one I've been working on is, is purely based in the UK, just, just the two of us, but there are a lot of a big collaborations, so you know, publishing in an American journal is, is, isn't as big a deal as it used to be. Uh, if there's really big discoveries, what happens is you get into these bigger papers, so it's just nature and science, so they're the really big stories, like um, the, the Kepler planet that was a bit like Earth, the things like that, the, the really big stories that have big, big appeal or big, big consequences get, get published to these papers. But there's lots and lots of research which isn't on that level. It may just be just as important, but, you know, you can't, you can't have every single... Uh, paper or bit of research in these big journals, so you have these other ones. Uh, and there's also something called Archive, and specifically for astrophysics, something called AstroPH. And that's something a bit more recent. That's an online journal that anybody really can submit to and can download papers from. The, the, the main journals, they have subscriptions, they have fees, or you have to be a member, or in some way they, they, have, to, they have to make money to publish these things. Uh, but things like Archive and AstroPH, they're, they're more an open source type, type thing. The, the difference really is, is that Archive isn't really uh, refereed, so there's no peer review in there. I'll come on to what peer review is, and it's quite important. But it does mean that you, there's free access for pretty much anyone to go out and get papers. So if you hear 
on the news that a new scientific discovery has been made or they claim that some science has been made. It's also not really a good idea to go and have a look in an archives. See if the, the science they're talking about is on there. Go and see if you think it's reliable. Don't just take their word for it. And that really does open that up for, for what probably maybe uh, 20, 30 years ago wouldn't have been possible because, you know, you'd have to subscribe to a specific journal. Now you can go and look for yourself. And I'll come on to that a bit later and I'll stick a link up as well so people can have a look at that papers if they wish. Some of them do tend to be a bit technical, but a lot of them you can skip over. You can have a look at the abstract, which is just like a summary, or maybe have a look at the discussion or what the main conclusions were, and see if that person is reliable, see if that bit of research looks reliable to you, and make your own judgments. I think I always think that's quite important. So, if I want to send in my papers to get published, how does it work? Because obviously they don't just accept anything, and I mentioned before peer review, which with the main journals is, is a very important part. So what we do, I specifically, I, I'm sending it into NMAS, so the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. And I send that in and it gets assigned to an editor. Uh, and the editor then sends it off to a referee. And that referee will be a specialist in the area. And they'll read through the paper and they'll decide what the good parts are, what the bad parts are, whether they like them, whether they think it's worthy for review, uh, for, for publication, sorry. They'll then return that to the editor and then the editor will send it uh, going back to us. And this really is a two-way process. Um, and there's three three choices they really have. They can outright reject it and they, they say the science is bad and you know th there's no uh, underfounding reason why this should be published or it's something that's been done a million times before and there's no reason to really publish it again or there's lots of different reasons it would be rejected. They can ex straight up accept it, go yeah that's a great bit of work, it's well written, there's no problems with it, I think that's great and it gets put straight in. But more commonly what happens is it will come back with comments. So they say maybe what about why don't you try this? I, I think if this you try this let's see what happens or I don't agree with this this part of what you're saying or have you tried looking at it in this way so they, it's obviously very constructive um, there's no there's no sort of or your paper's just flat out bad if they thought it was flat out bad you'd normally just get rejected straight away and so then we look at these comments and then we decide what we think we agree with and what we disagree with and then we'll make modifications to the paper likewise. Maybe we'll go away and do a bit more research. Maybe we'll go and get some different results that something that the editor had thought of that we hadn't thought of. Then we'll rewrite the paper and resubmit it again. And if you have a look at here on my paper, that's exactly what we've done. So you can see all these red bits. These are all the bits we've decided to change. The blue bits are bits from the other author, which obviously it's, it's one of one of us writes it, or maybe one write one part, one write another part. But we, it's both of our papers, both of our names, so it's very important that we both agree what's being said. So it bounces backwards and forth, and then when we're happy with it, uh, we send it back again to the editor with with uh, the, the changes, and also with the comments back to the original referee saying, okay, we agree with this, we've gone away, we've changed this, we've changed X, we've reverted Y, and in some cases as well, we don't agree with uh, what you've said here, and here are our reasons. So you don't have to agree with everything the editor says, uh, sorry, the referee says, because that wouldn't be, that, that's sort of beside the point of it. It's, it's meant to be constructive improving the research, not just agreeing for the, for the sake of it. They then get sent back to the referee again, and the same process repeats. So... If they're happy with all the changes that you've made, they'll send it back and say, OK, yes, now I'm happy with the paper, and then it will be published. And although we have all these people involved, at the end of the day, it's down to the editor to make a decision. Sometimes the editor won't agree with the referee, or they won't agree with the person that's sending the paper, and they have their final say on it. But most of the time, they won't go against the referee, because the referee's a specialist in the subject. They know a lot more, probably, about the referee than the editor does because the editor may work in a completely different area. So the referee has a really important role and this is what we call peer review. So it's reviewed by our peers basically, it is what it, is, what it says. They get reviewed by our peers and what they think, whether they think it's credible research, whether they think it's important research and whether it's, it's worthy of going into the paper basically. And so, so once it gets published, um, 
that's the point we normally put it onto the archive. Um, I mean, as I say, archives is open source. You do have to be careful when, you, when you're looking through the archive because there's nothing to say. It has to be through a referee journal. And it's quite important to look for a referee journal. And refereeing process isn't perfect by any means, but at least you know that someone's had a look at it who's a specialist in the field and they've, that it's not just someone's opinion. It's, it's credible research. And another important part is, uh, in science, I mean, why, why do we interested in telling all the other people who are working in our field about it? And it, the main reason is, is uh, because you need to build up research. It doesn't normally all come in one big, one big go. You don't just sit around one day and start a complete new bit of science. You work on other people's science. And indeed, anyone who's been to uni will always tell you how, how much of a pain it is, you know, having to reference everything. And we have to do exactly the same, exactly the same. So this is my reference page. It actually goes on to a second page. So this is, it starts here, and it's, it's almost pretty much two, uh, a full A4 sheet, a very, very small print of references. So these are all the pieces of work that I've referenced. So things that, whether it, some of them will be examples of, say, uh, specific cases of things I'm looking at, and things that are similar. Others are, say, theoretical things, so models of the, of the specifics I'm looking at and how they fit into my work. So you only have, you building quite a lot of previous research, and that's why it's important to get your research out there. I think probably the biggest uh, example of why it's very important to think about how you publish your research is, uh, actually mentioned in one of my, in the Big Bang talk, uh, and that's the, the Big Bang of Lemaitre, who published his work to a very small uh, Belgium journal. And although there are some very good reasons why you should, you should maybe look at some smaller journals in some cases, his, his paper got overlooked, and that's why Hubble gets a lot of credit for uh, things like some of the, the theories, although he there's sort of a confusion there because he was working with Hubble's data, again, building on, so he, he would have done exactly the same. He would have referenced Hubble's data and Hubble's work in, in his, his paper. Uh, but Hubble ended up getting a lot of credit for his work because he published in the journal, so a, a small Belgian journal that not many people have heard of. So it's quite important to think about how you go about publishing your work and, you know, how, how you go about publicating, uh, uh, about communicating it with the public and others around science. So, I hope you, that's given you some sort of enlightenment onto the sort of ending stages of, of a, of a, of a uh, project we do in, in research and astrophysics specifically. Uh, I'm now away off on the, con uh, off the workshop for the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'll be making video updates as I go along there. I'll probably wait until the end and put them all together with a bit, bit more time to uh, give a proper update rather than giving 30-second chunks uh, during, the, during the next couple of weeks. Uh, but if you have any questions um, that I might be able to answer while I'm over there, please feel free to either drop down a comment or ask a question on the forums or put a question on the, through the normal form or Facebook or ya uh, not Yahoo, um, YouTube, uh, all the usual ones there. So I'll remind you all again. Uh, Facebook is Ask an Astronomer. Twitter is Ask Astro UK. If you want to ask a question specifically when I'm over, that's probably a good one to go for because I love my phone and obviously I'll get to it on my phone. Uh, and also, obviously, leave a comment on this YouTube channel. And I'll speak to you all next time. Goodbye.